Each and every recruiting cycle, there are plenty of big time names, especially at the quarterback position. Going back just a few years ago to the class of 2019, the state of Arizona had two prodigy-like quarterbacks. The first was Spencer Rattler from Pinnacle High School, who was a five-star recruit and would end up going to Oklahoma and became one of the biggest names in the class. The other guy was a player by the name of Jacob Conover. He was a superstar quarterback from Chandler High School in Arizona, and he was also Mormon. That's why he decided to go to BYU, and he was expected to not only save the BYU program, but potentially be one of the best quarterbacks in school history. Sadly, after a few years, Jacob Conover has now played at both BYU and Arizona State and has not been able to make it work. Not only has he not been able to make it work, but he's been extremely disappointing. He will now be on his third school, and instead of Conover going to the NFL, we've seen guys such as Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall go to the league. No one really would have expected that back in 2019, but here we are. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Mormon prodigy quarterback by the name of Jacob Conover, go through his insane rise, his college career so far, and what has happened to him. But before we get started, if you're a big fan of college football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave a like if you're going to support today's video, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I can cover next. Now let's get started and talk about what happened to Jacob Conover. One of the best parts about having your own YouTube channel is you can talk about whatever player you want. I doubt there are many other channels that'll talk about Conover, but he's a guy who I've watched over the last few years. I remember when he committed in high school, and I now remember that he has transferred multiple times. He'll actually be competing with former Iowa quarterback Spencer Petras for the starting job at Utah State, but going back in time, no one could have seen this. In fact, he was supposed to play on the West Coast. When he was growing up, the Conover family lived in the state of Oregon, and he was surrounded by both Ducks and Beavers fans. The rivalry is known as the Civil War, and he grew up in the thick of it. He one day came home from school talking about the Oregon Ducks. His friend was an Oregon State fan, and Jacob decided that he was going to be an Oregon fan, but that was fixed very quickly. His dad, Jeff, actually ended up going to BYU back in the day and played semi-pro football in Germany. He immediately corrected his son and said, no, you're a BYU fan. From that point on, Jacob Conover was hooked on Brigham Young. When he was in third grade, he wanted to be a big-time quarterback, so him and his father mapped out each and every year and what he'd have to do to get there. Eventually, he continued to be a good quarterback and was also blessed with great athleticism, so when he got to Chandler High School, he was going to have a chance to be something special. Chandler is a school that sends off plenty of NFL players, as guys such as Brett Hundley, Deion Jordan, and Cameron Jordan all went there, and there are plenty of other names. It seems that Chandler is always producing a big-time player, especially at the quarterback position. Conover would take over as the main guy as a sophomore, and in 2017, he showed that the team belonged to him and that he was going to be a big-time recruit. He ended up gaining nearly a dozen scholarship offers during his junior season, and in particular, in the Arizona State Championship game against Perry, he hit three receivers for more than 100 yards and won 49-42. He set a 6A record for combined points, and Jacob Conover was now a huge deal. He was a superstar at Chandler, and as he opened his senior campaign, he was already the all-time passing leader in Chandler High School history. He had accumulated 6,500 yards, but one moment had stood out. During a 62-0 blowout victory over Mesa High School, he was pulled from the game before halftime. Instead of sitting on the bench and hanging in the crowd and enjoying the game, he was sitting next to the coach and helping send signals to his backup quarterback, Mikey Keene. If you guys really follow college football, then you know that Keene was a starting quarterback for UCF at one point. Can't remember where he is now. But he was a high major player, and Conover helped develop him. Luckily, he was not alone, as he had a huge wide receiver on his team, and his name was Gunnar Romney. He's another guy who's actually a pretty big name, and I believe he got an opportunity in the NFL. The two would connect regularly during their time at Chandler, and both would later reunite at college. Yes, they would. Except, where would they end up reuniting at? Well, it was one of the worst kept secrets, but Jacob would eventually choose to commit to BYU. This would come over Arizona State, and those were the two schools in his final two. Well, Scott, those don't seem like very big offers. Well, yes, both of those schools are Power 5 programs. The reason why he was considered a prodigy is because he had some other big time offers, including Alabama, Ole Miss, and South Carolina. Those are three premier SEC programs that wanted a kid from all the way in Arizona. I also can't leave out the fact that he's Mormon. Many people knew he'd go to BYU from the get-go because he said he was going to do a mission when he got to college. Everything went hand-in-hand, hand, and combine that with the fact that he was a BYU fan and their history with quarterbacks, and it pretty much felt perfect for them. Because of all that, it didn't seem to get a ton of fanfare when he committed to the Cougars. It was just something that the fans seemingly expected. Truly, it was expected, and he was a die-hard fan. His dad said, quote, I used to ask him this. 
You have a full ride offer to both Utah and Ohio State, but a walk-on offer to BYU. Which one would you choose? He said, quote, I'm going to walk on to BYU and prove everybody wrong. So besides that, why did he choose the Cougars? Well, his dad went there, he loved the school, and he really liked their head coach, Kalani Satake. Combining that with their history, it seemed like a great fit. While he was verbally committed to BYU, other big-time programs really tried to get him by the end of it. They would not be able to win out, and he was honestly a huge deal. He was considered one of the top pro-style quarterbacks in the country, as 24-7 Sports, ESPN, and Rivals all had him amongst their top 10 players at the position when he committed to BYU. There was only one issue with him, though. It seemed that Conover did lack height, but everything else, he had. He was smart, had a great arm, was accurate, put up big stats, and was athletic. He truly was the real deal, and was following in the footsteps of Brett Hundley and Bryce Perkins, both of which ended up having great careers in college. Chandler was becoming a high school quarterback factory, and according to 24-7 Sports, Jacob was a four-star recruit, the number 11 pro-style quarterback, and the 317th best player in the class of 2019. So, how would he end up doing at BYU? Well, let's take a look. When Conover had committed to BYU, they were fresh off of an awful season. Going into 2020, though, they had just found their new quarterback in Zach Wilson. It didn't really matter at the time, though, because he was going to be serving his mission. Unfortunately for the world, things would go absolutely crazy in 2020, and his mission would come to an end. He decided to come home, and he made a crazy decision. He would walk on at BYU for the fall semester. I know, it doesn't really make sense, because he was supposed to come in 2021, so he didn't have a scholarship guarantee until then. He decided to come a walk-on, and with the NCAA giving out that extra year of eligibility, it would not affect any of that. As I said, he'd end up walking on, or eventually he'd sit behind Gunnar Romney, Zach Wilson, and Jaron Hall. So, instead of watching on the sideline, he'd get a first-hand look at the playbook, would get to practice, and get a chance to be with the roster. Eventually, he'd continue that backup role, and BYU exploded in 2020. They arguably became America's team, and Zach Wilson went on to be a top-five pick in the NFL. Going into 2021, it was a three-man quarterback race, and it would come down to Jacob Conover, Jaron Hall, and Baylor Romney, his old teammate. Sadly for Jacob, he'd end up finishing third in that battle, and many expected the sky to be the limit for him. He'd actually get a chance to play for the first time, and this would come against Utah State. He ended up going 5 of 9 for 45 yards. This came after Romney went down with an injury, and then he would also appear in their game against Idaho State. So far, he had pretty much done nothing, but going into 2022, he was now going to be the solid backup. So yeah, he'd end up being the backup the entire year, but would only get a chance to play in two games. He played against both Arkansas and Stanford, having one rush against the Razorbacks and one pass attempt against Stanford. But this was pretty bad. While Jaron Hall was banged up due to injury, they decided to play him instead of going with Jacob. They thought that playing with a hurt Jaron Hall would, would be better than playing with a healthy Jacob Conover, and that really showed that he probably didn't have much of a future there. After the season was over, Jaron Hall would get drafted by the Minnesota Vikings, and he decided to enter the transfer portal. Sadly, if you go back to third grade, everything was going well in the progression chart. The last thing he'd have to do was be a star quarterback at BYU and start a game. It would never end up happening, and he would enter the transfer portal. After Herm Edwards was shown the door, Kenny Gillingham became one of the youngest head coaches in college football and took over Arizona State's program. He brought in Drew Pine from Notre Dame, brought back Trenton Borgett, and also brought in big-time recruit Jane Rashada and Jacob Conover. He had four decent guys to choose from for different reasons, but sadly, he would end up falling to number four on the depth chart there. Rashada would end up getting hurt pretty early on in the season, and Conover wouldn't get his chance until the next two guys went down. He would end up appearing in two total games in 2023, going 6 of 16 for two interceptions against Fresno State, and then 5 of 22 for 41 yards and a pick against Utah. Both of these performances were very sad, and he really, really struggled. While Jaden Rashada ended up entering the transfer portal as well, Conover saw the writing on the wall and also decided to enter the portal. This would come just a couple of weeks ago, and on the final day of April, he announced he had received an offer to play for Utah State. In May, Conover would announce that he would go over to Utah State, and he would battle it out with Spencer Petrus for the starting job. As we flash forward to the season so far, Conover has appeared in one game against number 12 Utah, in which he went 2 of 4 for 22 yards. He didn't end up doing anything, and as of now, it looks like he will be the backup and maybe we'll have an opportunity to play next year, but either way, this is definitely kind of sad. Conover did everything right, seemingly was a great player coming out of high school, and had everything lining up for him to be great at BYU. It just never ended up working out, and in the small sample size of opportunity he's gotten, 
he has not been able to perform. To my knowledge, he hasn't struggled with injuries, but honestly, maybe going on that mission trip changed things. As I was researching the video, I found out that a lot of players end up losing their physical shape when they go on mission, and to me that's one of two possible reasons here. It's either that, or that scouts just completely misevaluated him. Maybe he never was a power 5 quarterback, that question I can't answer, but I will say, I'm going to be rooting for the guy this year, and I hope he takes over at Utah State and gets a chance to ball out and live up to his potential. I've followed him for quite some time, and if you see this video, I hope you enjoyed it. But what do you guys think? If you're a BYU or Arizona State fan, what do you think went wrong for Jacob Conover? Why did he not pan out, and what has happened? Also be sure to give me another quarterback recruit I can take a look at next, and any other topic you'd like me to cover. Before you go, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my video about what happened to Keaton Slovis. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.